Welcome everyone to Beacons of Balance. I'm Arlene and this is Linda and this is Dr. Patricia Bell. I would like to welcome everyone here if it's your first time joining us. The podcast YouTube is all about living in balance. So it's bringing balance into our life. This is a world of duality, up, down, black, white. And the best thing is to be right here in balance. So we share with you different topics each month. We bring on guest speakers to talk about different different facets and how that relates to bringing us balance in our lives that we need so desperately. And I want to make a little announcement. Every first, these are these are every Wednesday of the month we have we go have an episode. What we start doing um, that I was guided from spirit the first Wednesday of the month. I'm doing a world peace meditation healing for the world so tune into that we need as many people to spread this around the world we're all in dire need the world the planet each of us needs it so i would like to introduce dr patricia bell um, she's regarded as one of the world's most gifted clairvoyant astrologer and speaker with a phd um, from the International College of Spiritual Science in Montreal. Patricia is a resident medium of the exclusive Lilydale community, which happens to be in New York, where she has helped thousands to heal through very traumatic things, grief, everything. And Dr. Bell is also an author of a book called The Time Timeless Love, A Guide to Healing, Grief, and learning to live again. She is a founder of two self-help centers and has seen clients throughout the U.S. and Eastern Europe. And that includes children, elders, every walk of life, including celebrities, government officials too. So that's pretty fascinating. So Patricia, Patty, if you Thank could, you. <laughs> if you could Happy touch to on... Hear both of you. Yes, you mm -hmm. mentioned children, which is where my heart is. It's a fun week in Lilydale. It's my 20th anniversary of Children's Week, where children have come to learn hands-on healing and mediumship. How they, wonderful. Oh, it's amazing. They are so, so talented. I was inspired by my grandson, Bailey, and so many parents, grandparents, aunts and uncles had said, oh my gosh, I wish that we I had this when I was their age. And, you know, because children are so open and sure. for all of this, but the children's program gave two things. It wasn't about making cookie cutter mediums. It was about them having friends that they could talk to, that they felt as though they weren't odd or different. But now we're opening up and there's this new group of kids that are so ripe that come in. I learned so much more from them. It's fascinating. And the program is awesome. Then Lily Dale, this year it's July 21st through the 26th, a donation of $15 a class. And you get to bring your parent or grandma. And oh, you, my Lord. Wow. All of the teachers who are veteran mediums and healers and everything. And we have a beach party and we have a talent show. And we have my beloved friend, Barry Goldstein, who wrote- I know the... Barry. Yes, yes, yes. I, I know was... Barry from he, before he was out, you know, out in the world with the music. Wow. Well, I did Barry's wedding chart, if that says something to you. And I was there oh, at was... his wedding. And, um, you know, we also have uh, Dr. Russell Brown, who's with us, and he plays- He's teaching these kids computers and spirituality. I mean, this is exciting because I think we have to come to terms with this, understanding about who we are, how we're going to be in this world. And if we can see computerization or what we are doing here in a spiritual light, it is going to get us more relaxed. Because I know there are quite a few people who are scared of AI. And I don't want anybody to be fearful because we have an opportunity to create a new world that is filled with love, abundance, and as you said, peace in meditation, which is absolutely phenomenal. Wow. So a touch on that, computer and spirituality. 
Well, Dr. Brown is master coder and things like that. That is his topic. I, I'll tell you, as you may know from just talking to me, I'm lucky I got on Zoom, but I really, I really <laughs> have a lot of help from friends. I am mechanically challenged in that way. Yeah, it's, I am too. I am too, Patty. <laughs> But uh, this is why you invite people like Dr. Brown into your circle so that the children are growing up this way. Mm -hmm. you know, they have iPads, iPhones, everything. And yes. if they can connect with it on a spiritual level, then this is very special. But we have other classes and they get to develop their mediumship. They get to do all kinds of, they, they learn astrology. They also learn how to be creative, understanding who they are. I mean, it's it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Oh, wonderful. Now, is there an age? How are the classes geared to? Is there an age you start? Well, with? it's children and teens. It's children. a children yeah. teen week. And if they come, that means they belong. Let's say, and I have had a six-month-old child in a class, and you go, what? Come on. And I really, really believe that that six-month-old child came so that that mother would understand that child in growing up so well, i wouldn't it be the mother or the parent bringing that six-month-old in obviously yeah but she the, it you see a lot of people it's their inner child too hon well yes and yeah, but, but, yeah. they have to connect with it's really beautiful could I, it's well, one of many things. Of course, I do the monks there too, you know. And this year we're having an incredible time with the Tibetan monks doing White Tara. Now, White Tara is a sand mandala of yeah. longevity, compassion, and healing. And this is very special. And so I, the head coordinator of that as well. Where are these particular monks from? Are they part of Thich Nhat Hanh's group from Plum Village or are they? Else? No, no, no. These are Dalai Lamas from the Dei uh -huh. Lhotseng Monastery. Okay. All right. Cause there's, all right. So some of them are from Tibet. Mm -hmm. Some of them are from India because obviously Tibet is no longer a safe haven. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, Phyllis, and so uh, on your journey in your life, when did you start? I mean, you probably knew you had a gift all along, but could you fill us in on that? We're, I, I saw that you were from the University of Montreal. You had gotten your PhD. Are you from Canada originally? or No, I went where they were teaching what I wanted to learn. Okay. I went where Dr. Raymond Moody was my commencement speaker. I was classmates with Marcel Vogel, the Vogel Crystal Man. He mm -hmm. was oh, what a oh, love. I, yeah, I know who he is. I, I mean, that, you know, so to have somebody that, you know, you're that intimate with, it was great. But getting back to my particular story, yes, I came from a very intuitive family. Yes, it existed. You know, when I was very young, I used to sit in my closet to talk to my spirit friends. And as I grew older, I sat in a development circle for 10 years with a bunch of my friends. I'm sorry, Tindra, would this be a, the spiritualist community? Uh, no, this was in Florida. This was before I got to Lilydale. Well, there's my... different spiritual, and while well, in Florida, there's Casadega is in Florida also. Right, and Casadega happens to be linked to Lilydale. I was because... just, yeah, I saw it. Yeah. yeah, because right. there's Lake Lilydale and Casadega. But no, this was a private group in which we did a home circle, which was a prevalent way to develop yourself as in any way you want. It was spiritual development, all right? And so I sat that way. But I did not, I was more concerned about doing healing than I was about doing mediumship. So during this circle, I met a fellow named Wang Choi, and Wang Choi was teaching numerology, which I also studied. Then what I did is I was invited to his house. And as I went to his house, I got to meet a fellow named Raul. Now remember, I was reluctant in doing mediumship. So I'm not a big social person. Actually, there's a part of me that's very introverted. So I left the party early. I got into my car and 
there was a spirit in my car. Oh my gosh, I felt like Whoopi Goldberg in the movie Ghost. <laughs> and, he, and this little old lady says, you got to go talk to Raul. <laughs> I'm saying to her, I don't know Raul. And remember, I'm in my 20s, all right? And um, she says to me, no, you got to go talk to Raul. And I argue with this woman, and I said, fine, I will talk to her. Um, just you you get me his phone number. And I drove home, and I was home. And then the next day, a girlfriend of mine named Maria called me. And as soon as I picked up the phone, boom, this little old lady showed up again. It was about 6 o'clock at night, and I was in Florida, in Hollywood, Florida. So I said, Maria, do you have Raul's phone number? Because if you make a promise to Spirit, you need to keep it. <laughs> so she gave me Raul's phone number, mm -hmm. and I was, but I didn't know what to say. I called Raul, and I said, remember, I'm young. He's young. He's from South America. And, you know, I, I was trying not to be imposing or give any sort of induendo. I said, Raul, I had a dream about you. And then I told him about the dream. He said, don't go anywhere. Obviously, I wasn't going to. I was at home. He made it from Homestead, Florida to Hollywood, Florida in 40 minutes, at which point he got to my condo. I made him a cup of tea. We sat down and I told him what the little old lady was saying to me. As Raul was walking out the door, he says, Patricia, I have to tell you something. He says, that little lady is my grandmother. Oh, oh wow. wow. And I had a gun to my head when wow. the phone rang, and you stopped me from killing myself. Oh, oh. my gosh. Oh, my God, I, could, I got chills all over. So if spirit really wants you to do this work, they will make sure you get there. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. You know, there's so many reasons why you don't want to do it. I understand. But, you know, these new generations, they don't, they're don't. they not going to have the same issues as those, those younger that we did. So that's part of my, that is my story. And to me, it's all about the heart. Right. You want to know which the best medium is? The best medium is the one with the best heart. Not the one that has to be um, queen of whatever. Not not the one that has to be um, on stage all this time. The one that cares. Like even when I do my readings, really? the first part of my doing readings is about the client. It's right. about what, I mean, some come very distressed, as you well know, Linda. And you have to be able to be with them first. I studied right. with one You know what? Week. I do find that sizing up, I know the type you're talking about that are used about the money or stuff, but they once told me, my guys once told me to knock it off, like energetically. I'm thinking, well, why are they doing that? That's not very helpful. But it's, it wasn't for me to, 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 to decipher. The ones that need me will come to me and I'll go for it from there. That's why whatever those other people are, I don't give any any warning or anything. I just let allow it to take place. Well, you know, John Edwards said in an interview with Maria Menundos, and he said anybody that goes into this industry because they think they're going to be a, C a TV superstar, get out now, because that's not what spirit is about, and that's not what spirit intends us to do. And I, you know, of course, I know John from Lilydale when he first came before he ever had his show. And he's a lovely, lovely uh, man and truly cares. And that's what makes him who he is. Now, we also I, know. And he's that, doing the work and he's going along just fabulously with it. You know, but we also know that there are people in television mm -hmm. who mitigate programs who do other funny things. And, you know, it is to me about respecting spirit, but it is a co-creative process. Exactly. We are co-creating with our person that comes to us. We're co-creating with the spirit. We are working together. And it's that sense of being one with all that is that really allows us to be on board. Like even in the YouTube community that I'm in right now, 
it's just multiplied and multiplied and multiplied. There's so many people out there, so many choices depending on your flavor. And it's a lot of good people. The community is pretty strong. It's kind of wonderful. Well, it is. And of course, you know, I'm sort of long in the tooth with this. Um, and I have been a part of Lilydale, yes, but I'm also a part of um, England because my teacher was English. I studied with Doris Stokes. I studied with Frida Feld. I studied with Peter Close, all brilliant English mediums. Peter Close used to be a Bobby before he wow. became a comedian. Yes, a, a, a sidebar, funny story. Some woman came to him with photographs once and said, I want you to tell me which is the best person to hire. Yeah. So he said the first one and he says, oh my gosh, madam, this is a very unsavory person. And then she hands him the other photograph and he says, oh my gosh, this one is worse than the other. Why would you want to hire this person? She says, well, I was looking for a hitman for my husband. And I thought oh. I'd ask you. Oh, my gosh. Oh, oh that's oh funny. My God. <laughs> Hysterical. Yeah, Peter's a spirit now, but uh, he was brilliant, brilliant, brilliant teacher. So, so yeah. what, was the, what was the feeling of Lilydale? What, what drove you to that community? Just because you've been there for, for a long time. So was vibration oh, a difference or? Believe it or not, Linda, when I was eight years old, I had this dream. When you go down Dale Drive, it's like this. And I kept dreaming this ever since I was a little kid. But it was my friend, John White, who is now in spirit, who has been trying to get me to Lilydale. But I was the type of person that took care of her parents. I raised my children. I took care of my parents. And it was after my father crossed over. I was sitting in a chair. And I said to Spirit, where do I belong? Four hours later, four hours later, John White called me and said, are you ready to take it out to Lilydale now? Isn't that fascinating? So I get to Lilydale and I drive down that Dale Drive and it's like this, whoa, I've been dreaming this since I was a child. Really? So that was, part, yes, absolutely. Then what happened is I knew I, I was going to live there. So John and I went to look at a bunch of houses. And so my girlfriend from New York City, who is a real estate person, showed up and said, picked a house and said, this is the one. I said, Myrna, this is a huge house. It's just me. Can't I have one of the small ones by the lake? Well, she said, no, 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 no. So Myrna goes back to the city. I drive back. John's going like this. They want to sell you the house. And I go, what? You know, the day before, Patricia Hades had a class in Lilydale, and one of her student mediums <laughs> said, your father wants to help you in spirit the way he couldn't in the living. Oh, wow. Okay. So John and I talked to the man that had the house. I came back to Florida. I got the financing of the house in four days. If it four was meant to be. Days. Meant to be. The man that owned the house was James Buchanan. The fellow that sold the house was James Barnum. And my father's wow. name, James Bell. Wow. wow. So, well, you know, James. <laughs> yeah. Well, it allowed Spirit to work with us. And this is the exciting part that as we oh. develop mediumistically and as other mediums develop, it's not just about, it's about each of us being able to work with Spirit in a very, very special way. Yes. Well, obviously, Arlene. What's does, supposed to happen will happen. Yeah. By making, uh, putting this program together for all of us, you know, it's like this impetus. And of course, astrologically, it's been confirmed. This eclipse was a doozy and it's opened up. And tomorrow, well, actually, later on in April, it'll right. be even more. Uh, the there's so uh, the Jupiter Uranus conjunction. Oh, you were yeah. telling me this by birth, though. <laughs> yes, has the what they call the mother dragon 
comet going by Jupiter Uranus. Wow. Now, Jupiter Uranus happens every 13 years, this conjunction. It's in Taurus. It's about the physical. It's about the material. It's about giving us the physical ability to move forward. But the comet is the green mother of dragons. And astrologically, we're in the Chinese year of the dragon. Wow. There's so many changes going on. It's about being who you are, knowing where you're supposed to go, and giving yourself the permission to do that. And there's going, see, the results of this happen is going to go on for 14 years until 2037. So we're looking at a lot of special stuff happening. I love it. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. You know, so I strongly advise that tomorrow, you know, allow the energies to open up. Now, the eclipse was at 19 Aries, all right? The Venus tomorrow is 19 Aries, and Venus rules Taurus. So it's all connected, just right. like connected with spirit. Yeah, I love it. So brilliant. Balancing it out. It. Yeah. Right. You know, even Absolutely. when I was younger, I decided I wanted to be a nurse and I had no background in medicine. And I took the test, the 437 took the test, and out of that, 133 passed it out of that, passed the test, and out of that, they took 30 to put through their program. And I was one of them. So you. you go with what, if it's supposed to happen, it'll happen. It should flow. That's my, what I feel. Oh, I agree with you because that's what your heart says. And it's like Greg Braden. Um, I was in a movie, I, I God, with Greg. Oh, I he, love that movie. Yeah. Uh, there are 40,000 uh, cells in your heart that are not attached to the brain, but are attached somewhere else. And I really believe that as he does, it is attached to our passion part of our destiny, our spirituality, and all of it. And so, Linda, you are the smart one. You listened. I just <laughs> went with the flow. But let me tell you, if you're not supposed to be doing something, they won't give you a break. If you exactly. married the wrong man when you knew that it wasn't the right, and your, everything in your body said no, and you did it anyway, you, you will pay. <laughs> and the other thing is when you ask them in, when you ask them in, they want to be asked in, and we ask them in, they don't leave you alone. I mean, they don't leave you alone. Them, I always do the auto writing, you know, messages and everything. This was some years back, especially three o'clock in the morning is the time of the energy, the time of the angels, I call it. They kept waking me up. I had pain in my elbow radiating down my arm that it woke me up. So I got up. And so what did I do? I took my spiritual books and I started writing. And I noticed I always have to, I can't use the computer. I have to write. There's something about the written word. So as I was writing, by the time I finished, the pain left. It was gone. I'm like, okay. I'm kind of like, aha. Uh -huh. So I go to bed. I go to sleep. The next night, the same thing happened. So finally, I wrote to them and I said, talk to them, actually, and said, please, I will on you. I will connect with you. I know I probably haven't been like I should be, but please don't wake me with pain. <laughs> and then it subsided. <laughs> they they listen, don't they? You remember John Walsh? Yes. Missing persons. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. My nephew went to school with his son, Adam. Mm -hmm. oh, Adam was, was, yeah, the boy, yeah. Adam was kidnapped. Right. And I did know what happened to him mediumistically. And yes, I was at Adam's funeral and I knew John and Renee. But at that point, I asked Spirit, I don't want to do murders, and I don't oh. want to do them of children. Yes. So, you know, because obviously I got this children thing going That's on. That's true. But Spirit sort of guides and protects those people that come to me so that I don't have to do that kind of work. That's great. Like, I could never do pediatric, even though the children are... They they recover the fastest. I couldn't stand to see children in pain. Yeah. No, 
I mean, let alone decapitated as poor. But, like, you know, uh, I, I will hit like the, everybody on my show one day said, what happened to Gabby? I didn't know who she was. So I did a search live on the show. Who is this Gabby? And I saw her. She had the long blonde hair and she was murdered. I saw it as clear as day. Oh, she was, you know, but when they're on the other side, it's not as traumatic sometimes. But she had been choked to death by the boyfriend. And she even she told me live on TV, he is going to shoot himself. He's going to kill himself. And almost like, boy, God, you know, she showed him sympathy. But that just happens. But I don't like doing murders. And people keep hitting me up and I try not to get the hit. And then I get it anyway. Well, I, I respect that. I truly do. But uh, sometimes they do wiggle their way into they our do. heart. And, you know, when you are such a heart-caring person, like the two of you gals, you know, this happens. You know, right. it happens. Because... But I, I don't walk around with spirits bugging me. How about you? I'm not... Absolutely not. I think it's no. disrespectful. I am not going to be what I would term psychically drunk. Oh, my gosh, I'm in Walmart. Uh, I, I, think up, no. yeah, I don't do that. No. I don't either because... I really believe that that's being psychically drunk. So this and brings it, me back. Okay, I'm fine. You want to finish? You know, as you gave Arlene, there's a time and a place. Yeah. There's a time and a place. Mm -hmm. I, I call it what John used to call it, my astral chair. When I go in that chair, that's when the phone is picked up. This is when we're, I'm on call. But I am a medium and I am a human being and I am here to live my life and learn my lessons and be happy. Yes, I can serve, but I have my boundary. Right. right. And, you know, it's one thing if you don't serve and you are spiritual, but you might get sick because you're not serving. But the thing is, if you give spirit the understanding of your life, they respect us. As much yeah. as we can respect them. Yes. So that brings me back to a point of how do you, i.e. Patty for herself, balance yourself with doing this work? Because it is, you know, it's draining. I know. Like, you, like when you're done with a heavy pull, duty People pull at you all the time. How do you clear your energy? Like I'm able right now, I practice to disengage, totally disengage. I understand. First of all, I have my boundaries in the chair. Second of all... I am very well aware of the fact that because I am a student, I have studied Chinese medicine. I understand that it pulls on my body. So therefore, one of the big things I do is take care of my physical self because we are spiritual athletes right. and it affects our internal organs. So I am very conscientious about having regular acupuncture treatments. The other thing I do is I meditate quite a bit. I would <laughs> sooner walk out of my house without brushing my teeth than not meditating. Spirit knows me and I know spirit. So we get to work it together. But you know, you both will understand a lot of the spirits we're working with are with the people who come to us. Yes. And quite frankly, it's just like saying something to anyone. Thank you for coming. I enjoy you being here. Thank you. I, the, you know, and I tell people, hey, you're not going to build a room in your house for me to talk to your mom and dad. So why don't you develop yourself? Thank you. Yes. Yeah. You know, it, this is yeah. a key thing. It's about empowerment. Empower. I was just going to, the word I was, before you said that, it's right here. I was going to say empowerment. And that's it. It's to empower each other. And that's what this channel is about. This channel is about coming in, sharing, hearing little pearls to help everybody in different aspects. And to balance yourself. But yeah. to balance and to, to live in that and to know that we all matter. And to get out of here and to go into here. Absolutely. And to see the light in each other, not step on each other. This whole world, that's, oh, it's just everybody stepping on each other. And there's such greed. I, it's just. That's because it has as to you stop. not in their heart. When they get in their heart, it's that aha moment as Oprah says, 
and people realize that that's not appropriate. But, you know, both of you are here for this obviously light reasons and, you know, opening people up to be able to do it. I still think that we are going through a planetary change in where there is an awakening and we're going to see even more and more of it happening. You know, I think we're just on the tip of the iceberg. I love it. I'm fascinated with the astrology end of it. There it is again, yeah. Western astrology, but uh, I, I yeah. really can't speak the language. But the best psychic astrologer I ever had, who's now deceased, her name's Patricia McClain. I don't know if you knew her. She was Shirley McClain psychic, but they're not related. I met her in LA and she did a reading for me when I was 38 years old and I was going through a hard time with my daughter and I was totally into myself. I mean, I was when I look at it, it's like, what a waste of life. But I needed to go through that to be where I am now. So she said, she said, oh, well, you're sad about your daughter. I said, yeah. She goes, oh, she's going to end up okay. She said, actually, you're going to have two more children, two boys. And I tried to get a tubal. I was trying to get a tubal, but they wouldn't do it because they said I was too young. I thought, this gal doesn't know what the hell she's talking about. Good but thing I saved it on tape. And she said, Linda, when you're in your late 60s, I see you before a lot of people. I see you teaching and I see a lot of people seeking you out. I see you writing a book. And I'm like, what? Maybe she's talking about Hollywood. I couldn't for the life of me figure it out. She said, you'll be like a great teacher. And I thought, nah, I don't, you know, I was an other so I don't feel like teaching. But by God, everything she told me came true. And she was into astrology and she really, there's not too many astrologers are good like you. I have a guy named Andre that's really good, but that can literally, I don't know how you guys do this, but somehow or the other, it's like a map and you go, aha, uh -huh, blah, blah, blah. It's fascinating. And you could, I would have thought she was great, great. I would have thought no way in hell. I had two sons, by the way. She thought I might have two twin boys. But they're only a year and a half apart. I had one at 39 and one at 42. And I love them, but whoa. Yes, Shirley McLean was 90 yesterday. Oh, so happy birthday. I guess era. that she kept herself on track too. But yeah. It's a language like anything else. And if you have a propensity for it and you enjoy it, it is to me fascinating. And astrology has its own, I, that's the other thing. In my lecture that I gave at the church, where I was talking about the eclipse, the eclipse was at 19 Aries, but the asteroid named Urania, which was one of the eldest of the nine muse, who is the muse of astrology and astronomy, was at 19 Libra. And she is also known for her ability of unconditional love. Oh, so, wow. Huh? So we That's have what it's all about. We have opportunity, but because it's Aries, it's like find it in yourself. Yes. The love yeah. has to start here. I always say that has to start here. Well, well, we could talk on and on and on, but we have to kind of wrap up. Thank you so much, Dr. Thank you. It was so nice meeting you. Oh, lovely being with you ladies. It's for been taking fun. the for taking the time to be with us. We'll put yes, link, thank you. We'll put your link below on how to reach you and everything. Is there one special way more than another? Or what's the best way? I don't know. You can well, go to patriciabell.net. I'm going to be in Lilydale soon. Mm -hmm. and, and just come visit, you know? I I've actually, never I wanna, been now. I've always wanted to go. I'm going to make the trip with my husband. I think we're going to come. Are there hotels outside the parameter to stay in? And, and there's hotels inside. Oh, there are? Oh, okay. In fact, I would strongly recommend you stay on the campus, as we call it, because ah, okay. there's a vibratory field. I'm sure, it, yes. It's an island. It is an ancient. It has many vortexes. It was an oh, wow. spiritual ground. We have a healing temple. We have a sweat lodge. We have a labyrinth. We have classes going on. There's a lot. Yes. So um, 
I did go to Casadega in Florida. <laughs> well, right, but this is going go to be a very different experience. I, I think, yeah, yeah, it's different. Uh, uh, we have we have a Victorian spin, and you know, you might find yourself staying at a place like Harmony House, which has a lovely porch overlooking the lake, or oh. something like that, and it's very comfortable there. And we do have um, Sacred Grounds, which is an awesome coffee house with food and things like oh, that. Wow. And now and, it, it's only open during the um, what spring and summer, correct? It's not open during the winter, is it? Or is it? Uh, we have certain events during the winter, but no. if you want to say it in full Lilydale mode, it's it will start. Uh, the opening day is June twenty first, and that's the weekend we have the monks. And it'll go to Labor Day weekend. It, it's an amazing, amazing <laughs> place. You know, whether you're having lunch outside on a bench at the Sunflower or you're down at the stub watching people give messages or you're at the Healing Temple having hands-on healing. What a wonderful place. I could feel the energy already. Yes, yeah. I got to go. All right. So, oh. well... Call me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you again. And uh, Linda, you tell her what you the change you want to see. You the change you want to see. And I want to thank everybody for uh, watching, listening. And as always, from our hearts to yours, in total love, peace, joy, inner peace. If you have inner peace, you have it all. Uh, please remember to subscribe, hit like, make comments, let us know what you, you like to hear. And um, thank you for being here. And also remember, the first Wednesday of each month, it'll be a, a world prayer for meditation prayer for the world every Wednesday, every first Wednesday of the month. So please join in for that. And thanks thank again, you. Patty. Have a wonderful thank day. You. Thank you. Pleasure thank to be you. with you. Love you. It was great meeting you. Good meeting you too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Yeah. Bye.